Now we've got another star-studded panel. Shall I introduce them? Fintechs, the good, the bad, and the necessary. Let's talk about it. Having more than 400 million in credit union investments, fintechs are certainly the future. Our, our moderator first is Brian Haas, the president of CMFG Ventures, and he is definitely leading the way on innovation. Next, we have Paul James, a board director from Connecta Federal Credit Union, and he is a volunteer, but he's also pushing relevant concepts and innovative ideas. Welcome. Then we have Kevin Polinski, the senior director of fintech solutions at CUNY mutual group, giving people of color and different minorities opportunities. And finally, we have Mr. Stephen Stapp, and he is the CEO of Unitas Community Credit Union, and as you know, across the globe, is engaging, is, in lead is leading, and challenging all of us to be the best versions of ourselves. So please, take it away. Great. Thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, Elizabeth McCluskey, who is going to be here, um, and she leads the Discovery Fund, which is the fund I mentioned yesterday that uh, is dedicated to investing in companies uh, in the fintech space led by diverse founders. Apparently, her, the pilot of her plane did not want to land in 70-mile winds last night, so she uh, was stuck back in uh, Washington, D.C., um, but very happy to have Kevin uh, stepping in here. So, you know, a lot of talk, uh, you know, certainly around fintechs over the last 24 hours, you know, uh, as Sam mentioned, I mean, we're, we're really at the heart of um, financial technology here in this hotel with Money 2020 kicking off later today. Um, so, you know, probably around 10,000 people will be here um, talking about the latest technology, the latest trends. And you know, I think one thing um, that, that to me is probably a little bit concerning is there's only about maybe 120 credit union attendees out of the 10,000 people here. And when I look back to last year, they, they, uh, we actually have fewer credit union participants in Money 2020 this year than a year ago. And that's a problem, I think, for the industry. Um, things are moving fast, and they're only going to move faster over the next five years. You know, a lot of the infrastructure really has been built out. You know, now these companies are scaling. Um, you know, we talk about market share, you know, it, it, there's 130 billion raised last year alone by fintechs. They've got a lot of dry powder to go after and, and grow market share. So we're going to talk a little bit uh, about fintech partnerships. Um, you know, I, I sometimes still sense a bit of skepticism around credit unions partnering with fintechs. Um, I think some feel like maybe they're selling out. Uh, uh, but you know, we've got a great panel really looking at it from a couple different angles. Um, so with that, uh, let's jump right into things. And so, uh, Paul, I'm going to start with you. I mean, as a board member, um, you know, what conversations are happening, you know, at the board level, uh, and maybe what conversations should be happening and what can we do to kind of get directors of credit unions, you know, more aware and engaged around uh, fintechs and and you know maybe the the benefits and and risks of these types of partnerships. Uh, thanks, Brian. That's a big question there. So I'm going to sneak seconds. up sneak up on the answer. Yeah, exactly. It was, uh, Thirty <laughs> seconds. So I thought I'd talk about a couple of things. I thought I'd talk about uh, something that's obvious, uh, and then I thought I'd talk a little bit about governance, which I think kind of gets to your question. Uh, in terms of obvious. We're all here to talk about fintech. The, you know, the panel is described as the good, the bad, the necessary. It reminds me of the old Shakespearean question, to fintech or not to fintech? And I think we're all here because the, the answer is obvious to that question. Um, little audience participation show of hands. Who saw the news piece just last week about the, uh, the latest Apple, oh, I'm sorry, the, the auction of the early Apple iPhone? Anybody? Okay, so I thought it was fascinating that the first edition, brand new virgin, unwrapped in the box, original iPhone, one of the original iPhones, went for almost $40,000 about last week. So as if that's not interesting enough, that's a 2007 edition iPhone. So that's what, 15 years ago, right? So. That says something about what was then revolutionary is now ordinary. We've talked about PayPal, that's about 25 years old. Um, let's see, Venmo is less than 15 years old. Um, 
uh, the other one, oh yeah, the, the bank version, that originally, the original version is less than 15 years old. So it just goes to show that as FinTech evolves, and this is, this is an evolutionary environment we're in, the stuff that used to be fascinating is now just taken for granted, and our members expect that as well as the things that our people are in this room you know, have been working on not just two years ago. So, so why is that important? Because somebody in the audience asked the important question yesterday. How much? When? What? How do we make decisions? Spoiler alert, I don't know. I don't, I don't have that answer. Uh, and, and my guess is that anybody in the room who says they do know and does have the answer is selling something. Uh, so, <laughs> ouch. All right. <laughs> All right, touchy subject. Uh, okay, so, so enough of the obvious. Um, so let's talk about governance, which I think gets to your question. Um, on our board, we, we have sort of two approaches to, to answering your question. The first is bet the horse, don't bet the farm, which leads to how many horses can you bet before you bet the farm? Uh, okay, that's a, that's a fair question. So which, which leads to the, the second point in our approach, which is we view thinking about fintechs as part of our long-term strategy. And just so that we're all singing from the same sheet of music because it's Sunday, strategy in my mind is about those things that give a competitive advantage to serving our members because it's all about serving the members. And so then what is strategy, how does strategy translate into strategic thinking and strategic planning process? The emphasis is on the process, it's not an event, it's ongoing. So for us, we make thinking about FinTech, part of our ongoing process. So we have dialogues at every board meeting about a variety of educational topics. We call them deep dives, and FinTechs is one of them. And it shows up in a couple of ways. Uh, Raj, are you you're here still somewhere? So CIO Raj, who was up here yesterday, does a great job, for instance, in one of his reviews of, of, of an operational area, you know, IT, we'll call it, and and let's say, face it, FinTechs is, is an important part of his presentation, and he does a good job, a great job, not of just talking about this year's plan, but he talks about the long-term strategy and the longer-term roadmap. That's really important to us as we think about how FinTech is gonna shape our business and, and what we're gonna do. Uh, beyond that, not only do we talk to, we have presentation from somebody on the inside, we bring in somebody from the outside who can help us with a FinTech environmental scan, so, because we, we believe that understanding the current state, the outlook, and most importantly, the lessons learned is something that we need to understand as we think about our strategic planning. So there you go. A little bit about the obvious and something that you can take home and do. Great, uh, excellent advice. Uh, Steve, kind of the same question, but maybe you know, wearing your CEO hat, um, you know, would also like to hear you know, a little bit about you know, sort of your process for vetting fintech opportunities and, and how you manage those relationships. Great, thank you. And did you actually quote Shakespeare this morning a little bit? Well, I'll go a different route. Uh, when I think about this, it is kind of like the Clint Eastwood movie, movie The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Uh, I'll leave the necessary there. Um, absolutely uh, partnering with fintechs um, is absolutely necessary for us. Uh, and I will say we take an approach uh, in three different areas. One, we look at how can we imp improve our, our customer experience? How can we deliver our products and services? Second, how can we create better efficiencies in our back offices and how we're processing? And then third, how can we better serve our community? Uh, and then I'll go back to that, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We watch our partners very carefully those some of our partners here in this room, uh, what are they doing? What products and services or what uh, new FinTech opportunities are they doing? Maybe they're creating that path for us. So that's an opportunity for us. Second, we'll look at, hey, maybe there's, there's a FinTech that's out there that we need to partner and learn more of. So we dive into that. Uh, and then the third is, all right, something's not out there. How can we create that path uh, but how can we create that path in conjunction with a fintech? And I'll give you an example of that, and I'll start with the community aspect. Um, in Portland, Oregon, no surprise, we were at uh, the forefront of uh, the, the aftermath of the death of George Floyd. We had over 100 consecutive nights of protests 
uh, many of those which uh, resulted in riots. We saw that there was real pain in our community. Uh, so I will tell you, the call went out to about 25 CEOs in our local area. What can we do to you know, better or work in this area? Out of the 25, five responded. Uh, the five we got together uh, and we ultimately ended up partnering with the Urban League of, of Portland. Uh, and in that, we, we leaned into with them, not with a solution. We thought we were coming to the table with a solution. We're credit unions. This is the work that we do. Uh, but we took a step back from that, and we really had them take us through their client journeys, what was happening to their clientele. And we learned that there were different paths that their clients were on. Ultimately, we want to get their, their, their clients to home ownership, but we know that that pathway started much earlier. What we found out from this is each of the five credit unions had different strengths in this particular area. Some of us had weaknesses in those areas. So not one of us could do this alone. Not one of us could do this work alone. So there's where we've created the specific journeys for, the, for their clientele. But then we partnered with a fintech organization and we're building an app so that their clientele can track their progress through their journeys, whatever segment of the journey they're on so that we can bring the resources to them. Because what we found from the, uh, from the Urban League was their clients many times started in this journey, but the partner or whoever they were working with would drop the ball or their client would drop the ball and this this family would ultimately be back in uh, not being served and we said we weren't really wanted to combat that so again I, I take you through that in that we we looked through that journey with the different credit unions but now partnering with the fintech to help us with the solution that is really working on, on solving this this uh, community issue. So, you know, we take a, a very close look at those that we partner with. Some some we're partnering in with with dollars and capital. Some we're partnering in with our our resources. Uh, we have several resources that we've hired in from outside the credit union industry. So they're uh, adapt at looking at. Uh, how the fintechs are working, and then we have others that we're we're watching our partners to see uh, see what they're doing in that process. Great. We're going to go next to uh, Kevin. Um, so Kevin is part of the fintech solutions team at CUNA Mutual Group. So you know, Kevin, we'd love to hear you know sort of the work that you're doing around you know kind of fostering uh, fintech partnerships with credit unions and and sort of the the broader strategy of the fintech solutions area. Yeah. You know, it's for me, I am new to the CUNY Mutual organization. My background is entirely financial technology. I've come from some of the large core players, uh, payment players, and others out there. Uh, I happen to live in Madison, Wisconsin, and knew of a company called CUNY Mutual Group that was kind of in the news and drove by it periodically, but beyond that, really had really had no idea of it and came to the organization through an acquisition of compliance systems. And for me, where I sit right now is probably the most passionate and excited that I am for you know, the direction that we're heading, the work that we're doing. You know, Brian, a lot of your efforts within ventures is kind of at the forefront, right? Really evaluating a lot of different FinTech companies. I think I, think I heard a thousand a year or something like that. And then ultimately, you know, we're funding and investing in, you know, just a handful. And then out of those, taking uh, some of those um, fintechs that really align with capabilities that we can bring to our credit union clients and building a distribution path for those, you know, a lot of the focus is on words that we've talked about here today, things like open, right? So it can't just be a conduit to sell more of our insurance products. It's really got to be capabilities that can add value to our credit union clients. Um, you know, we've talked about pivot and change. I think for me, it's a great example of coming into a really large organization, a large organization that's historically been kind of known for one thing, and how do you shift and, and pivot and change to adapt to other capabilities. But, you know, part of it is how do you unify both the, you know, credit union system overall but things that I see as the strengths, right? You've got member trust, you've got lowest cost of funds, but how do you do that in a way that can bring those capabilities to credit unions? I remember a conversation that I had with a credit union leader at a conference like this, and they talked a lot about member trust and things like that, but I was like, well, how do your members know that? Like, how do they know those things? And one of the things is we talk about kind of the friend or foe model 
is don't leave things to assumption, right? If you want your members to know that you do something, you've got to educate and inform them. You've got to bring a capability that supports that. And you can't just leave it to an assumption that they're going to know and understand. That's one of the things that the direct-to-consumer fintechs do a really good job. Paid two days early. They just say it right in a commercial, right? And I think sometimes we as an industry rely on the assumption or rely on a presumption. And I think a big part of it is bringing capabilities out that can support it. Can I add on? Yeah, you, you, you know, I was sitting here and I was thinking more about your question. You, you talked about partnership. And uh, you know, I'm going to say something to, I think, most of the, the folks in the room here that there's another form of this partnership that is critical to, to making the whole fintech exercise work. And, and that is the partnership between the directors and the CEOs, or the, or the, the, the volunteers and, and, and the staff. And I'm particularly proud of the relationship or the partnership, I think, that our board has with our CEO, never mind Raj. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and honestly, we give our CEO a fair amount of latitude to, to exercise some discretion when it comes to doing, you know, participating in the FinTech environment, because let's face it, we're the board, right? Um, and, um, and I think that's reciprocated in the level of, of uh, communication and collaboration that our CEO gives to us as a board of keeping us engaged in the, the same exercise, right? So I think that's an important part of that whole partnership that, to, to make FinTechs work. Yeah, those are some excellent points. You know, I think the one thing, you know, I would add to, I mean, sort of a, a critical element, I think, to the success or failure of FinTechs is really kind of understanding the company of the, and the culture of, of the FinTech companies. I mean, we, you know, as Kevin mentioned, our, you know, have, have met with now, you know, at least a few thousand FinTechs over the last uh, few years. And, you know, we really like founders that, that share sort of the common view of, of helping, um, be more financially inclusive. And sort of these founders have missions that very much align with the missions of credit unions. Um, and, and so yeah, I think there's a perception of, you know, these are all people that are just looking to, to kind of get rich and sell. I mean, a lot of these companies are like, hey, I came from a background where, uh, you know, my parents couldn't get access to credit. Um, I'm, you know, maybe a first generation uh, 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 resident in the U.S. and you know we basically were overlooked, and so there's you know there are more commonalities than than we might think. Um, uh, we'll shift gears a bit here. Um, yeah, I think we're seeing more credit unions now starting to uh, make investments directly into fintech companies. Um, also, yeah, I know Nick uh, Evans is here from the Circle Fund. Uh, you know, they're helping to invest on behalf of credit unions. Um, you know, I'm going to go back to you, Stephen. Um, you know, what is your view in terms of, you know, in making investments in these companies? I, I think you've made a few you mentioned. Um, would love to kind of get your thoughts and advice on credit unions that might be thinking about that. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so one of the things we've done is we've formed a, a CUSO with two of our other local uh, credit unions. Actually, the CUSO is called Technologic, Techno, Technological uh, Innovation Alliance. Uh, so fancy little name. But it allows us to uh, look at our different uh, fintech partners and decide uh, collectively amongst the three of us, how do we want to invest? Uh, and we look at each opportunity, some we're investing capital, and so when we commit that capital, uh, boy, you do have to have that really close working relationship between the CEO and the board. You look at things completely different than we did 10, 15 years ago. We're bringing to them companies that have never made money. Uh, it might be an idea. How much do we want to invest? It is at risk. Uh, capital. It's at risk member money. Uh, so we want to know what is the outcome of that uh, and what is the business case? What is the outcome? Uh, and if we don't make it, what did we? What will we learn from this that we can apply and, and continually push this forward? Uh, and so we have a we, another process called the agile process where we do really look at all of these uh, examples in real time or each of these case offerings in real time. Second, we may be uh, making some direct financial contributions. Uh, and then three, now we have our teams that are leveraged now with the FinTech and actually development of the product or the service that they're working on. And, and we get to work through with them through the various phases and guide through them. Um, you know, we will find many times 
they may have an idea, but they don't really know how it applies within the credit union space. Uh, and if they, and we've seen this, and they just go off and develop, and then they bring it back to us, and we say, no, that's not it. You don't understand our credit union space. Let us join together with you in this co-development, and let's really apply what it is in the credit union space that we need. What is it that our members really need so that we can really develop a solution uh, in that process? Um, and so that, I'll say, you know, some of it is actually dollar, uh, dollar amounts that we're investing capital. Some of it is our time uh, that we're investing. Uh, and then others is, uh, again, we're, we're bringing along others within our, within our space to help uh, fund these. And then we're looking out there um, there are still struggles and needs by our members or our communities that aren't being fulfilled uh, by products and services in our industry or uh, by some of the fintechs. So how can we, how can we leverage that uh, and work on those solutions? So we have a couple of those. So uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's a lot of work. It's not for those that uh, 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 don't have the time to do it. You've got to find the time to do it and, and put that into the process. Yeah, Steve, I, I want to just, you know, I think emphasize the point of, you know, sort of this uh, concept of innovation is something you actually have to, to work at to get good at. Um, and it's sort of a muscle that needs to be developed. Uh, you know, you just don't start partnering with, with fintechs and maybe have immediate success. And I know even from within our organization, you know, we really kind of embarked on, um, you know, embracing sort of this uh, you know, technology and, and you know, there's a, a learning curve that we went through just as everyone else does. And I think for, for credit unions that are, you know, maybe sitting on the sidelines, um, it's going to take a couple of years of, of to get things really right and honed in. Um, and if you, you know, again, every day you wait, every month you wait, you're, you're falling, you know, kind of actually a few years behind, uh, you know, kind of where, where things are going because it's, it is a learned skill. Um, uh, you know, Paul, maybe the same question in terms of, you know, as a board member, um, you know, do you have any views around actually making investments in the fintech uh, companies out there uh, and any thoughts you can share with board members? Uh, the, I think the, the first uh, starting point is kind of the big question, what about, you know, risk appetite, uh, right? That, that, that's the starting point. You know, how, how much risk are you willing to take recognizing that uh, some succeed, you know, some marginally succeed, and, and not everything succeeds? Uh, we've taken this, an approach that we've uh, made investment in a, in a pool, of, in a fintech pool, uh, to see where that will take us uh, and give us an opportunity to keep our eye on, you know, the various, on the environment. Uh, and then we similarly made other investments in d uh, direct opportunities because we believe in their mission and we think that uh, that's what's good for our business and, and what's good for our members. Um, time will tell how all of those things turn out uh, and whether we, were, we made good decisions on our risk approach or, or not. Um, I think that's it. Kevin. Yeah. You're probably making personal investments in fintech, so uh, I might ask a different question. You know, you've been in the industry a long time, you know, with respect to uh, working in financial technology. You know, what have you seen works, and maybe what doesn't work when it comes to uh, you know credit unions working with different financial technology companies? Yeah, I think I think two things that become impactful right away. Thing number one is. Um, because of the amount of fintechs that are out there, just understanding, you know, what strategy, what are you looking to accomplish, right? How do you start to narrow the focus in from 10,000 into something that is valuable for the credit union? But you talked about it with risk, right? I think it's understanding, um, it's not just risk, I would say it's the adaptability to recognize that it may or may not work out. I think partnering with organizations that want to partner with you is hugely impactful, right? It's kind of getting out of the mode of trying to partner with people that really don't want to partner. And Brian, I think you all do a great job from the venture side is just looking at folks that actually want to partner. And even you, you talked about it a little bit on, can you help influence? Can you help guide, right? Can you understand and break down the natures of the credit union business? against somebody that's built out a technology and a capability and how do you start to align those things, 
but I would say, you know, strategy and, you know, risk acceptance would probably be the first two things that I would come into that mix with. So you don't set yourself up for, you know, expectations that aren't going to be met. Or if something happens, you're not then immediately disconnecting and say, hey, we tried it once, we're all set, we're done. Steven, you have you know, experience now working and partnering with fintechs. You know, it's not always uh, you know, sort of um, just r red roses and, and uh, rainbows and, and things go smoothly. You know, when challenges do arise, you know, how do you work through those challenges? Um, and what advice would you have to credit unions to, to get through the, maybe the rockier times of these partnerships? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. And maybe I started with that, the good, the bad, and the ugly. There, there are those in this space that, that don't have genuine interests. Uh, they, they are there looking for that prop, profit motive and to spend that. So we spend a lot of time right up front working with uh, a potential FinTech partner, really getting to understand their management team, their philosophy, uh, how well aligned are we. And that's where we put this into this kind of risk model uh, uh, for that particular company. We may not invest our capital we'll invest our time and help them product develop. And we tell them right up front, we're not putting in any of this capital. Now, I will tell you, they come to us at least eight to 10 times after that and ask us for capital. <laughs> uh, and you just have to be prepared. No, that this is our principle. This is what we're willing, we were willing to work with you through, you know, this X phase of this product. Uh, and yet we're not willing to put capital capital into that. There's a cost with that as for our time and what we're doing. Uh, and then there are others that, to, you know, we look and they're very well aligned with our mission, our philosophy. Uh, they're, you know, they're very engaged. Um, maybe they're so, solely working in the credit union space. Those then are where we look to see, okay, we have an opportunity to add additional capital, one to be in that partner of influence for that products and services. But now this has a global, a, a more global reach uh, within uh, our, our credit uh, credit union uh, ecosystem. Um, I would be remiss to say, uh, you know, prior served on the World Council of Credit Unions that we also look globally as to what's happening and what are the trends that are happening around the world. Uh, we heard just a few moments ago a little bit about open banking. We've been following that very carefully to know that eventually that's going to land here on our into our system. So what are we doing to prepare ourselves for that from an education standpoint of view, watching the, the business cases that are happening either in the UK or in Australia to then say, how are we going to be prepared for these future events? And, and that's also helping us look at kind of future partners uh, in the fintech space. So it's not just looking here what's happening in our uh, ecosystem, but it's, it's looking around the world and what's happening. And many of them have had very progressive solutions uh, in how they're serving their members of their countries. Uh, and that's what we're watching as well. Before I ask another question, just want to see if there are any questions from audience members. Yes. I, I come from the credit union employee being an entrepreneur of a fintech, and I'm the good side of the good ugly. But I've seen, you know, credit unions have a great vendor management, and I was on that side few years, and we try to squeeze out the blood from the fintech, right, some of us. So that situation kind of puts the bad, I've seen the bad are more successful working with the credit union than the good who is delivering value. How do you suggest, to them, how can the credit union look at the value that the fintechs are delivering and put that investment and put that uh, you know, interest in them rather than just seeing uh, the initial thing? I'll tackle that one. I, you know, there's the, um, those intangible benefits. And again, I'll go back to, that's a lot of our, the discussion that we have between myself and the board, my management team and the board, and talking about that, that yeah, here's the capital investment, but here's the intellectual investment, and here's the learning opportunity that we're having. This may be successful, but through this process, we're gonna learn something that we're either gonna keep with this, or we're gonna learn something to do it better, differently uh, down the road. So how much are we willing to invest? Um, you know, I can take our, my staff and I can send them to a conference, uh, spend forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 sending several to a conference, or I can have them actively engaged with this initiative. They're going to learn from that initiative. It's a fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 commitment, but now we're going to be able to leverage that going forward uh, in how we're doing that. And 
I'll go back to our agile process and how we're evaluating things. It was very, very rocky four or five years ago going through this process. Now the team is meeting every week and deciding what it is that we're going to do next, and they're starting to hone that down. Hi, Brian. Nick with Circle. Thanks for your comments. And Steve, I appreciate your approach uh, when, you're, when you're talking to these fintechs and how you evaluate them. Uh, Brian, this question is for you. Uh, or anybody up there, but uh, I had a QSO holding company president call me the other day, and uh, they're, uh, they're investors. They know how to invest. They're, they're well-respected in the space. But I, the question he asked me or he said was, hey, I'm getting some pressure from my board, and they want some returns, like next year. They want to see some return on their investment. And I said, your board members are putting a time limit on – return on investment, he says, yeah, I'm getting a lot of pressure. How would you advise him, uh, that, Brian? And, I mean, and maybe you've heard that before from uh, CEOs and boards in your, in your travels. Yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, it, it's a longer game. You know, when you make investments in, in fintech companies, you know, these are illiquid investments typically. You know, they're not a public company that uh, is traded, so you can't kind of buy, get in and out of your positions. Yeah, I think the average, uh, you know, kind of time to uh, in exit event is you know, anywhere from seven to ten years. So you're really kind of making, um, uh, you know, developing that relationship, and it's going to last a long time. And you just have to know that because uh, I've heard that. I've heard some, you know, it's like we, we put that money in 18 months ago. How come? How come we haven't tripled the return and and uh, you know gotten that money back? But um, uh, yeah, that that's just not kind of the reality of, uh, and I think part of it too is, you know, if you're looking at investing and, and you know, Nick knows this, um, to kind of dabble in it, you kind of do so at your own risk. I mean, it, you know, we look at, uh, you know, probably in a year close to a thousand fintechs to decide, you know, maybe the 10 that we're going to invest in. Um, and so we see what works, what doesn't work and, and. You know, sometimes if you don't have kind of that uh, expertise, you know, it can be kind of dangerous to, to put money to work um, uh, unless you're kind of investing alongside others that are, you know, kind of experts in the space. Great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Paul, you mentioned a while ago that uh, you have several investments in fintechs and you talked about risk appetite. Just wondering what, uh, what your objectives are or have been in your investments and uh, it was interesting to hear some of the you know, dollar numbers. What what are some of the amounts that a credit union would expect to invest in different uh, ventures? Okay, thanks for the question uh, or questions. Um, I, I just want to go back to this gentleman's question a moment ago, and uh, I'm just going to th copy, I guess, what uh, Ke Ke Kevin said. Yeah, it, it's about strategy, and, and in particular, it's about alignment. So there's both the, the economic question and then there's the, the, the business interests. And, and to your, your question, I think um, our focus is really on what's best for the member. Uh, and and to, to keep going with that whole alignment thing, to the extent that we can identify something that we think that is you know, far and above better than the other alternatives, whether it's what we've got or what else we see out there, then that's something we're gonna pursue. And, and, and in fact, that's how we've made the decision to do a couple of the things with people in the room. Um, so, so that's the way we look at it. Uh, I'm hesitant to give you a number about what to expect to invest. I think, you know, I think there's other people, Brian, you know, Brian can tell you about specific transactions, I suppose, because the reality is, I think it depends on your credit union. So what might be right for my credit union, and we're six and a half billion or so, might not be right for your credit union based on your capital budget or your risk appetite or the opportunities that you have in front of you. Um, so I'm not sure if that's helpful, but maybe, maybe Brian, you want to talk about specific things and what you know, what deals and, uh, and investment opportunities you, you have. Jump in maybe from just from a credit union perspective, and um, in 
this debate we're getting ready to have with our board, and I have my board member here, so he's, he's hearing this debate before we've even brought it to them. Uh, but we're roughly putting a number of about 10% of our members' capital is to the limit of, of where we would invest. Now, we're not there. We're not even close to that number. Um, but that, And this is through QSOs and through FinTechs uh, and that number. So it's just kind of giving us a ballpark to say this is – this is the amount of money that we would be willing to put at risk, again, with specific objectives of what we want to return from that, from that, from that risk. Again, it could be learning, it could be a new product or service, uh, it could be partnering with a QSO that's aggregating our costs for debit credit card transactions. Um, but that gives us a number as to now this is kind of the risk level that we're looking at and how we would invest and now we can debate that. How do we best spend those dollars to get the best return uh, for our objectives? Well, great. I know we're at time. You know, my, my last real quick comment is just I think the other benefit of these partnerships is that you get, uh, in many cases, access to world-class talent. Um, and, you know, we talked a little bit about the Apple card. Uh, we were able to um, lure the CTO away from Goldman Sachs, uh, and um, he had been involved in the launch of Marcus, which is our digital bank. He oversaw the launch of the Apple card. He's now the CEO of one of our portfolio companies. That company is working almost exclusively with credit unions, uh, and he's going to bring basically uh, you know, the knowledge um, and experience that he has. He wants to build out a very robust API platform. Um, and so that's sort of another uh, benefit of these partnerships. So with that, I wanna thank uh, my fellow panelists here, Steve, Kevin, Paul. Uh, thank you very much.